next year there will be 50 years since I have started teaching math. In all these years of doing math, I worked mainly in two directions. One was the direction of doing research and therefore expanding the, vo the volume of mathematical knowledge. And the other direction was the one of improving the teaching of the teaching process. Now, in the last 10, 15 years, the second route was much more important to me. And this was for many reasons. One of them is here. And she is sitting among you. This talk is an illustration of the second direction. Here I'm trying to, spend, to spread a new and more complete light on a very well-known topic, the percentages. First, a few words about the word of. Let us rhetorically ask, find what is two of four? What is two of four? Everybody will say two of four is like one to two, is 0.5. Two items of four, point five, uh, zero point five. I'm sorry. If we ask now, if we check now, if we ask now, what is two hundred percent of four? Then the answer will be significantly different. Two hundred percent of four is eight. So, uh, in the common exception, the 200% is 2. So, basically, we didn't change anything in our question. 2 of 4, once is 0.5, another time is 8. How come it's so different? So. What makes that two identical questions to have so different answers? Maybe because the second question, in the second question, the number two was seen as a ratio. Uh, indeed, if somebody is asking, what is three-fourths of 300? Uh, you and me, we are, or how to find three-fourths of 300, you and me are saying right away, three-fourths times 300. But if you ask the same question a, a fifth grader or sixth grader, he might be a little bit... Uh, skeptical to the answer. What is how to find, to divide or to multiply? You can take, tell him three-fourths of, uh, three of 300, the word of means multiplication. So, and he will eventually be able to give you the answer. But this if you tell him that the word of means multiplication, he might or might not uh, accept right away that, that uh, statement. And, uh, but if you, ex if you 
explain him a little bit better. Uh, one fourth of 300 is 300 divided by four. And uh, therefore is what, 75. And three times that amount is 225. So therefore, by combining these two steps, three fourth of two, uh, three fourth of three hundred is three fourth times two three hundred. So therefore, is plausible uh, plausible that the word of means multiplication. But not always, like we have seen, the word of not always means multiplication. By now, I think I have uh, raised the question about the word of, because the word of is a central word in the percentages. Let us speak about now, uh, now, let us speak now about percentages. And I'm telling you that uh, from this point on, uh, what I'm going to say are some of my ideas. So if somebody wants to blame somebody else, that one is me to blame it, yes? So, however, before you make an opinion about all what I'm going to say, whether is acceptance or disagreement or even strong rejection, please wait until the very end to see how everything falls into place. To tell you the truth, I have read and I have seen many books uh, and, uh, and some books are more complete, some books are not so good. And uh, among all these, I've never seen uh, what, I'm going to tell you now. Uh, and some, some of them try to go to the, to confirm my ideas and my thoughts, but they stop short. And the reason, I don't know the reason for which they stop short. For example, in Toby and Slater, this is a book which I use very much at uh, Western in, uh, in my work with the teaching assistants. In Toby and Slater uh, is the following sentence at page 313. Remember, whenever the denominator of a fraction is 100, the numerator is the percent. Remember, when the denominator of a fraction is 100, the numerator is the percent. And this is precisely my definition of percent. The percent, what is the percent? Is the numerator of a fraction with the denominator 100. However, however, I'm, ma I'm making a difference between the percent and the value of the fraction. So, so, 
if the percent is p, so I'm making a difference between p and p over 100. Uh, a few words about the sign percent. It is right? Yes, it is. There is an idea that by attaching the sign percent to a number, we divide that number by 100. My opinion is that by attaching the sign percent to a number, phi, for example, by writing 5%, we simply communicate that we are speaking about 5%, about 5 per 100, 5 out of 100, about the numerator with the denominator 100. The sign percent, in my opinion at least, is an abbreviation of the word per, per hundred, percent. Exactly how the, num the sign per mil is an abbreviation of the sentence of the parts per thousand. Exactly how PPM is an abbreviation of parts per million. Exactly how PPB is an abbrevi abbreviation of parts per billion. We do not Repeat, we do not identify the numerator of the fraction with the value of the fraction, even if the denominator is the ubiquitous 100. Now, if we assign the letter P for percentage and the letter R for the value of the fraction, this, then P over R, P over 100 equals R, we have the formula R equals P over 100. Now, I will name this R the ratio value, or simply the ratio with capital R to this distinguish from the usual ratios. And I would notice that this is also what is what in many books is called uh, percentage, pr percentage as decimal, percentage as decimal, yes. Now let's try to go a little bit deeper. What importance does this number R have? To see this, let us have an example. Let us say that a bank is paying its custom customers an annual interest rate of 5%. Yes? So in my interpretation, P equals 5. This means that for every $100 kept in, a, in, a, in the account for a full year, the bank is paying five bucks. In this situation, the ratio R equals 0 0.05. R equals five over 100, which is 0 0.05. Yes, 
was found by dividing 5 over 100. But by the same division, 5 over 100, is, find, is found how much the bank is going to pay for one dollar. So the bank pays uh, five bucks for, for one hundred dollar. For one dollar, the bank will pay five over one hundred, so point zero zero five, so five cents. So when we go from P to R, in fact, we go from per 100 to per 1. Yes? In all books seen by me in the last 10, 15 years, there is practically an identification between 5% and 0 0.05. And here is one proof of that. 5% equals 0 0.05. Yes? The point is not that 5% is not 0 0.05. 0 0.05. The point is that 5%, this one, represents parts per 100, while 0 0.05 represents parts per 1. So, is like looking to 5% before dividing to 100 and after dividing to 100. Before dividing it by 100 is a per 100, a percent. After it was divided by 100, is no longer per hundred, is no longer per cent, because the division was already done. And now it is per one. So this means per one, this means per 100. This is the difference between 0 0.05 and 5%. And all books what I have seen, in all books what I have seen, like I said in the last 15, 10, 15, whatever years, they try to identify this, identify these two, to see as identical. And in fact, they are not. I, once more, I'm not saying that they are not equal. I'm saying that they are not the same. Don't represent, one represents per hundred, the other represents per one. Now, is this difference important or it is only academic? Because if it is only academic, why bother? Yes? Now, let's see what's happening to evaluate this, to, to answer this question. Let us try to solve the first basic percent problem. Everybody knows that in working with percentages, we say A is the amount, R is the percent as decimal, percent as decimal, and B is the base. 
And everybody knows that A equals R times B. Of course, I hope you don't expect me to prove another relationship than this. I will prove that relationship, but not by translating uh, what is the, what are the words in a basic percent problem. What is R, no, what is P percent of B? And the answer is A is a R of B is, a, let me write P percent p percent of b. Yes? And what is the method? What is? This is a. Is is translated as equal. p percent is translated as r. Of is translated as multiplication, B is translated as B. Of B, yes? Let's try to work about this problem. Uh, Instead of using dry numbers like here, let's take again the example of the bank, which is paying its customer 5%, 5% annually in, in interest, yes? And let's say that Jim kept in the bank a sum of money, 2,350. What is the interest the bank is paying Jim for this money after a year. Is the basic percent problem, is the first basic percent problem. What is A, the interest when is given the percentage, the percent and the base B? How to solve this? First, from the fact that bank, the bank gives 5% interest for every $100, by dividing 5 to 100, with so equal 0 0.005, this we find how much the bank is paying Jim only for $1. This is the first step. So going from per 100 to per 1. And after that, now if the bank is paying 0 0.05 dollars for every dollars kept in the account, then for 2,350 box, uh, it will need to pay 0 
times 2,350. So 2,350 times more. So therefore, this multiplication from here is the result of the fact that this is one is is the 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 interest per one dollar, and we don't have one dollar; we have more than one. So, therefore, is is clear that this is the 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 way to do it. So, and the answer is whatever it is, one seventeen fifty. Yes. So therefore, the strategy of solving this kind of problems is for to go to the find the ratio r corresponding to the percent p corresponding to p percent. So this means go from 100 per 100 to per 1. The second step is if you have the amount paid for $1, then for, for B dollars, it will be B times more. So if we name the interest A, A equals B times R becomes a clear formula. Please notice that here in this formula from here, we didn't use the fact that the multiplication times here, the multiplication uh, represents the word of. The word of, the, 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 we came up with this multiplication for a very straightforward reasons, mathematical reasons. Now, this method from here, so go from per 100 to per 1, and after that solve the problem, is a method, a very well known, is a well known method in solving arithmetic problems. It is called the method of reduction to unit. So what we are doing here, we don't do anything else, but we switch from pair 100 to pair 1, and after that, uh, solve the problem. Let me show you how this method works not for the percent, but for the per mil. Yes? And let's solve a question similar, a problem similar with the uh, previous. And the problem is the following. How much? pure salt is in 
is in 450 kilograms of seawater with a concentration of salt of 35 per mil. 35 grams per 1,000 grams, because per mil means per 1,000. So 35 grams per 1,000 grams or 35 kilograms per 1,000 kilograms. So let's think in this way, 35 kilograms per 1,000 kilograms. How to solve this problem? We solve this problem by using the method of reduction to units. If there are 35 kilograms per 1,000 kilograms of seawater, then by dividing 35 to 1,000, which is 0 0.035, we find how many kilograms of salt will be in one kilogram of seawater. So there will be 0 0.035 kilograms salt in one kilogram seawater. This is the moment where I, I reduced my problem to a unit, one kilogram of seawater. And now, if I want how much salt is in 450 kilograms of sea, of course, I will multiply this 0 0.035 times 450 and find the answer. So 15.75 kilograms of salt. So there are 15.75 kilograms of salt in in 450 kilograms of seawater. So what do I want to point out here? I want to point out two facts. The first fact is that the in order to solve these problems, I I have to use the method to reduction to unit. So this multiplication from here is very well explained. Is not that is the significance of the word of. We, I didn't explain this multiplication by saying this is the word of. Uh, and the second fact is that uh, here I found the the 
basically the first fact is that I, uh, I use the, the, the reduction to unit. And the second fact is the explanation of this, this multiplication here. So in, in asking what is uh, the 5% in, in saying that the 5% is 0 0.05 here, this, uh, this uh, add, I'm sorry. Yes, is the same. <laughs> I didn't notice. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this fact uh, the, is a little bit misleading once more. I don't say that this fact, this, e this equality, is not true. In, in this talk, I wanted to point out the significance of the left-hand side and of the right-hand side of the equality. The left-hand side of the equality is uh, parts per 100. The right-hand side of the equality is parts per one. And this is a very significant difference. And uh, I don't know if uh, how many people are aware of this. But uh, hopefully, from now on, we'll be a little bit more uh, clarity in, in this uh, direction. <coughs> if you have questions for me. Yes. With the five percent and the point zero five. Yes. At one time you said that they are not the same. Uh, <coughs> not that they are. Not, they they have the same value, but they don't have the same significance. I I was No, I uh, what I have written what I have written here is the following. Let me let me read from here. The point is not that they don't have the same value. The point is that one represents pa parts per 100, and the other represents parts per 1. Is, it is like looking to 5% before dividing it by 100 and after was divided by 100. Before dividing it by 100, it is per 100, parenthesis, percent. After it was divided by 100, it is no longer a per 100, a percent, because the division was already performed, and now it is per 1. This is... If I, I was saying something different, I uh, apologize to you. Yes. Yes.
Yes. Yes. Um, some of that also applies to the slope of a line. Yes. Because when we find the slope of a line and we say that it rises 4 over 5, there are. because we actually count 4 times. Yes. Yes. And yes, I know. Uh huh. And yes. When we go that is equal to 4 fifths, we automatically said that 4 fifths per 1. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is not necessarily the same as 4. Per five. per five. Yes. So yes. That is the same idea for going uh -huh. to the slope of the line. Yes. Yes. Trying to place them to uh -huh. the same equation. Yes, and uh, yes, and uh, the the coefficient of x in the equation. Yes. Basically, basically, uh, this was I I have been thinking uh, about how come the percent five percent is identified is identified with point zero five uh, and uh, uh, I uh, I thought that there is a need to change something to, to sp split these two numbers. Not that, that they are not equal, but in order to make sure one, what one represents and one the other represents, to, to make a difference, a difference in the, the meaning of representation, yes? So, um, I don't remember, is too long how I, I, uh, how I have been taught. <laughs> <laughs> yes, is, is, uh, Because if it's a representation of x. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we use it in order how often we actually speak the same, but then if we want to actually make this simple, this difference. Yes. Uh -huh. Is it something that we actually have discussed in the class? No, 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 no. I have been reluctant to change ev anything from what is in the books because, uh, because uh, it is uh, sometimes much safer. <laughs> yes. Yes. I was working in my when working for the storm system on that day. Uh huh. They were covering my rock. And when you began, you really began almost in a language that was a meaning to mean oh. Yes. And a an ambiguity or a phrase in the English grammar. Yes. And you try to translate English grammar into equation. Yes. Into English grammar information through mathematical systems. Yes, in in one way, uh, you are perfectly uh, uh, you are right because because I tried to remove the the explanation, the usual explanation that the word of means multi multiplication and give another explanation, yes, related to the per unit and uh, to that multiplication. Once we give another explanation to that multiplication, we can come back to the old, let's say, English grammar and say, indeed, Look at here, this is the equation. This is uh, uh, how we say it. So therefore, 
is reasonable to say the word of means multiplication. So this, yes, this is the way, uh, is another explanation for, for this multiplication from here and uh, unrelated to the word of, which, like I said, is not always precise, doesn't lead to a precise uh, mathematical operation. Sometimes leads to a division, sometimes leads to a multiplication, and so forth. So in order to avoid this, I tried to give another explanation, yes. And this, this usually, I think that you is, is much more direct and uh, accepted, more accepted by uh, everybody, including the young children, including the young children, and especially the young children. So if you have five, yes, this is, if you have uh, five, uh, say, if you have five, let's say, what, what, how should I say? If every book cost five dollars and you have 17 books, how much would they cost? 17 times 100. This is uh, accepted and understood, I hope, I'm sure, by, by uh, everybody, and especially this is, uh, uh, is, is, is understood by the, the young children who generally are uh, at the beginning of their, uh, let's say, mathematical knowledge, and uh, they are not sure when, what is, uh, this is it, so I think, yes, you are right in, in your uh, observation. More question? Yes, yes. And I don't know when I'm not pursuing calculus when it's <laughs> just constant. For example, that's what I know. But uh, if you go way back 19th century and earlier, you don't see that much. In fact, I don't know if you see it at all, and, but I do think I remember seeing something that sounded a lot like reduction to units. And I have a feeling that maybe that was something that was done a lot more in that time than the ugly time of this more recent calculus. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome.